Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's over. And it's it. back. Yeah. Are we on? It's happening. We're on. You're on. All right. Welcome to Crippled System. That's my new, my new tone. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm so sad to be alive. Episode 158, the Brian episode. My name is Brian. I am Brian. My name is Brian. My name is also Brian. What? No, your name is Brian. Brian? Yeah, it's not yeah. also Brian. It's, it's not also Brian. It's oh, just yeah. Brian. Yeah, that, you know, no, it. shitty Brian, I guess, would <laughs> also be the, the best. <laughs> I don't know. Jobless Brian. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. So yeah. there. Way to rub it in. Come on, you know, you gotta, that's how we do things here. <laughs> what an asshole. How recently did <laughs> this happen? Like, uh, Wednesday, oh, actually. Nice. So. so he's just got over drinking himself to death. <laughs> I was not allowed to drink. I tried. I'm like, I'm going to get a, a thing of vodka and some orange juice, just head home. And it's like, no, you need to look for a job. And I'm like, well, yeah. you, you get you fired. You get like a day or let off, let go. No more than, I mean, like laid off, I guess, is the technical term. I, I mean, end of the, well, laid off is better because you get severance. <laughs> fired, you don't get yeah, shit. So you, you got the important yeah. version of it. Severance is nice. Yes. Well, oh, and I did know like two weeks in advance. So that helps. Yeah, yeah it does. So, I mean, yeah. like you're a computer guy. So you, there's like the jobs grow on trees for you guys. I yeah. would have to get a job right away just because I couldn't handle being jobless. But I would for sure for like a day just not move. Just lay there like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then get back at it. But, you know, 24 hours. Uh, I guess we should go. Announcements. MomCom is in two weeks or one week? Two weeks. Next, it's not next week. It's two weeks. It's it's, it's May three 13th. or four weeks, isn't it's it? It's two, the, no, it's it's a week before it's Mother's the week Day. After, after Mother's Day, Day. so, that's so two it's weeks. a ways ways away. Three weeks. Next weekend is Mother's Day, so the weekend after. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, I mean, Mother's oh, Day is fancy actually, that. I guess boom. I am horribly unprepared. <laughs> three of the four of us are going. Are you going? You're not going, right? I'm not going this you year. Get a job. I know. So the three. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll make you cry all episode. It's going to be the best. Yeah. So you're going, right? I am planning on going. And you're going. I'm for sure going. So three out of the four Bryans will be there. I owe it to Johnny to go. There you go. Have any of you seen The Life of Brian? Because I have not. Yes. Bits and pieces, uh, but not enough to really like, quote to. it you like want crazy. To see? I, always, like, it's, I felt too much pressure. It's like I have to like compare that with a lot of my life, and I just couldn't. I never, I've never watched it because of that. Oh, I feel it. like it would just never live up to mine. So you've only wa- you, you're the only one who's actually watched all of Probably, it. Probably, yeah, and I don't remember very much of it anymore right. because that was a long time ago. Right. I was just curious. I was always curious how many Brian see The Life of Brian. My uncle owns almost all of the Monty Pythons. He so would. That's amazing. Yeah, I so I started watching Life of Brian, and uh, what else was there? Obviously, Holy Grail. I forgot the last one, though. I've Meaning only, of Life. Uh, I've only ever seen Holy Grail. Meaning of Life is actually very funny. I've only seen like clips and stuff on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to look up inspirational stuff. It's hilarious. That's kind of what I get to. It's just the the internet pieces it together slowly for me. It's like a pirate treasure map of Monty Python. Meaning mm-hmm. of Life is like in two hours Saturday Night Live when it was good. So. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. So of the so, Brian, what factions do you play? I play Protectorate, and I've kind of dabbled a little bit into Mercs. But I'm not all the way, and I have a whole bunch of troll bloods I've never painted or touched or really done anything with. All right, <laughs> you've all, you, you, you've been on the podcast once before, right? Haven't you? At least once. I not, thought not the podcast, but uh, there was a battle report I did. Okay, so when you I got been, destroyed. When, yeah, when you decided to. Uh, you, <laughs> what was <what's> excarnate? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. It was yeah. It was those stupid flamer guys. Just the cleansers <laughs> walked up, and it's like, I think this is where Brian's explaining to Brian what excarnate does. Oh, yeah. That's a while. I forgot, I forgot that happened. I, 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 it all blurs into one, one game, one yeah. pool of one, but all one big. Was it was a, was a Brian V. Ryan bag? Different color. Yeah, yeah, they and do that. that. We Everyone embrace diversity colors. here. Then the other event coming up. I, I'm just all over the place. It was an yes. event. It was Life of Brian. <laughs> information about Brian. And now the last announcement is May 28th is our Madison final. You know, well, probably our final Mark II event in Madison, more than likely. Or people can bring po- proxies of things that aren't out yet, which would be pretty exciting <coughs> for them. You can't have Will on the... Yeah, he's not a Brian. On Brian. You know, only if he had a name tag that said Brian. Like it said Will crossed <laughs> off, and then it had Brian on it. We, we, we don't plan ahead, so that's why it doesn't say that, because we're not that good. Someone also mentioned that the same weekend of Muse Minis is the Welsh Masters, so evidently yeah, we can't now go to the Welshland. I'm going to call it the Welshland. That's Welsh your name. Land. Welshland. <laughs> I, I wish Jeremy was here, because I, I could ask him where Welshland is. That's where they make grape juice. Delicious grapes. <laughs> Delicious grapes. <laughs> there you go. 
Did uh, so? Bear, I was gonna try and make something happen in Baraboo, like in the early June for a Mark uh, two event as a last hurrah, but um, I'm not so sure I'm gonna be able to do it anymore. So I'll figure it out. I'll let everybody know like two weeks before it, or before I do it. So cool. works. Excellent. Depends on how trash they get at MomCon. And this is your, your you've been on it a couple times, right? Once. Uh, once. All right. You, you've been here. Well, I guess when Celeste was here, you yeah. obviously, but you mm-hmm. know. I always forget who's on how many times because I, I skip. I've skipped a few here and there, so I never know who fills in when I'm off. You know, without pants somewhere else. This yeah, that was the weekend division came out. Oh, yeah. So you were not here. I didn't have pants on that weekend. <laughs> or yeah, <laughs> pants were nowhere to be found. I am screwed in me. There are like too many video games coming out that I need to play. I mean, I'm, Diablo new season came out. I've been going crazy on Overwatch beta, then Overwatch launch. There's Total War Warhammer. There's Uncharted oh, yeah, Four. <laughs> I'm not even playing Bloodborne. I want to, but I can't fit that game into the system. That's a game like I go. I'll, maybe I'll sneak Battle it in June. Yeah, Battleborn. I I want to play that, but I don't even have time for the games I'm trying to play. It do is you, atrocious. Do you play a lot on consoles, or is it just on PC? Uh, I like Overwatch. I prefer first-person shooters on the PC, but I sometimes get overruled by the number of friends who want it on the, on the console. So it really depends on where I'm going. But I. I, I, I said, screw it, I'm playing Overwatch on the PC, because a game like that, I just need to play on the PC to get my full enjoyment out of it. But I'm the exact opposite. I prefer first person yeah. on the console. I like yeah. playing things. like I'm looking forward to Uncharted on the console. I really, I really enjoy the third-person style on a console quite mm-hmm. a bit. That's like because I can I can actually aim and react, but when I'm in a first person controller, I'm like a drunk child trying to <laughs> shoot people. I actually have a Zim, which lets me, like, which is a mouse keyboard setup for my PS4. So whenever I get a shooter I'm serious about, I can hook up the Zim and I can yeah. actually simulate it. It's not 100 percent as good as a like PC, but it's pretty close, and you can really tell the difference. And people mm-hmm. are like, "Oh, the guy's cheating! He shot me in the head." It's like, "No, fucker, I can aim." <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you give me a fucking mouse. I can you know play a game like it's intended, like God intended. In games like Total War, a console can I still couldn't handle yet, so that's why I'm yes. going to be playing on a PC. But yes, honestly, if games like that could be played somehow on a console, I'd probably stop having a PC. They tried that. Mm. Yeah, they I did see. it with Command and Conquer. Yeah, and it it was just got you'd have to have a good yeah. mouse keyboard. You see, you'd yeah. have to for those kind of things. You'd have to the, the PS4 doesn't want a mouse keyboard on there. They, you have to like because you have to get the third party Zim. You got to mm-hmm. do it, it. Actually works okay, but. Yeah, they just say they frown upon it, which I mean, I I don't understand why you should let people play how they want to play, but whatevs. What do I know? Hunger. Yep, yeah, you are correct. Oh, he he saw that. I think I think Andy took our advice and gave a name tag. He's been upgraded. Unless he, yeah, he got. See, Skinny Will, which I I, I like to refer to as sickly Skinny Bill, Bill, <laughs> Will. Well, I guess Bill's not. Little Bill. Yeah, little yeah, little Bill. He's now he's you know, he's Mini Brian. He's been adopted. Is Mark three. Mark yes, three. Mark there you change his name. <laughs> so, Culp, I don't know. What, you Did you ever play Crix or no? You, you no. played a little bit of Crix. You just Scorn and Kator. Yes. So you you think we're going to see a couple of factions this week? think Scorn might be up in the this next week? Um, I'm hoping they do it faster than once a week. Otherwise, they're not going to get through I think them we'll all. See, I think we'll see I think two we'll see to two, three yeah. a week. Um, they mentioned something about Signar being last. And if they continue to go War Machine Hordes, I would expect probably Legion next, and then Kador, because then it sounds like they're going reverse through the gotcha. order. It'd be kind of exciting if we saw Legion, because I really won Eyeless. I There was like a hint. They, they, the the Peter Rapture Press is having too much fun. Yes, they are. Because they're hinting at... <laughs> they're flat out saying certain things, and they're hinting at other things, and... Yeah, my dad plays Legion, and he was really butthurt over the Prime cast. <laughs> um, because they didn't give a single good thing about Legion, apparently. And, uh, yeah, that was that was frustrating to him, because they were like, yeah, you're just getting nerfed. Um, but they've since released that, like, Zuriel's getting reach, which yeah. oh, is nice. cool and scary as fuck. Um, the Archangel is speed 7. Yeah, the Archangel's oh, yeah. speed 7 and can back up just far enough for you to complete a charge if the 3-inch thing still... Yeah, it's got reformers or re... It's, un, it's like a, um uncanny speed or some shit like some, that. I can't yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's got it. another... Yeah, so it's super, super fast. Um, and it's got Dragonfire as an Animus now, so... 
Thanks, just thanks for your rabbit gore. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to keep up with the spoilers because you have like your you have the insiders, you have the prime, which is easy to do. And then you have like the official form. thread, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then those fucking staffers like go crazy on social media, just dropping little things. They just walk into a thread. Yeah. Say, oh, by the way, a little detail. Then they leave. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by you the know, way, like, <laughs> rage on the wrestler. Yeah. Oh, or they the did like the minion warlord thing. They gave a little like they mentioned that they give prey to the brigands or whatever, like a little yeah. surprise, yeah. little like out of the blue. But the thing thing about all of it, except for like actually seeing the cards like they they spoiled that venethrax has counter charge battle group which that's a rule that we know but like he'll also have terminal velocity and um the one with the thing i'm not talking about yeah the spell the I, spell that does stuff I, yeah I, I minus two death the, the no da- yeah um mortality mortality um and, thank you everybody but that's what it was <laughs> yes but we, we don't, don't know what it's gonna be so it's just like yeah that's cool that he's got terminal velocity in mark two but yep. what is it going to be in Mark Three? So I take a lot of these like, oh, they gained this as like, cool, maybe. <laughs> the ins- they did a pretty good job with the insider to give you a pretty good taste of what to expect at least for a faction. Like the insider yeah. for Crix was, pr- I mean, people got panicked because I mean, Crix. The way I see Crix today in Mark Two is you one hundred percent need a Crix list if you want to consider yourself a chance to win the mm-hmm. event. And seeing the changes they did with Excarnade and the Biles, like you had to just prepare yourself for certain things. And that's sh- obviously we haven't seen all the shenanigans. So maybe when everything is said and done, it'll still that'll still exist. But right now, it feels a lot less like well, I have already to dedicate Excarnade. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, we don't know what the other things that are going to come out are going to do. That's true. But if they keep the same level, I won't need to say half my one of my lists must always be a Crix drop. Or, yeah, or if you go into like champions and or ADR, you don't have to have one that specifically as Craig's, and then you can like kind of sub out so it's yeah. a little bit better against more things but if you never face Craig's, you're just shat on yeah which always blew it just seems like with the changes right now Crix is going to be more of playing an archetype instead of its own game because right now Crix just tilts math like crazy mm-hmm. and that's that's what Crix does that's like, no other faction really does i that. know some Crix players that hate that because they everyone always brings a list for them so even though they go to events they have to like out cricks, they, either have, they either have to cricks harder and go even deeper into it and try to be able to burn through the tactic mm-hmm. or try to go outside the box in some ridiculous way, and that can often not even get good results either. So mm-hmm. you're going to see so many people playing their factions in Mark Three the way they played in Mark Two, and they're going to lose, and they're going to be so mad. And like, well, maybe if you just didn't do the exact same thing yeah. because it's a new addition, well, you're going to... Uh, I mean, this kind of goes back to announcements in a way, but um, with the WITC... <clears throat> That is now open to everyone to sign up. So we've got, I want to say, eight or nine teams yep. signed up, and it's a World Team Champion style event in Wisconsin. Um, that's gonna be like the first major event post Mark III. Yep. And you're gonna see so much shit just thrown at a wall and seeing what sticks. I mean, I can guarantee that the the top two teams are gonna like everyone's gonna copy all their lists for at least three months. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because, yeah, exactly, because no one has a fucking clue. <laughs> so and we have to, you know, it's only going to be out for like, well, technically we'll know on like the 12th of June, so the list will have basically three to four weeks of really being able to plan for it. But yeah, but still, but, lock, you're not, but you're not going to know all the things. Yeah, though. the list lock is July 8th. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, we got less than a month to try and figure out all of the potential. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas how long did it take for Cricks to realize that Blood Witches are a thing? Yeah, it was, it's going to be interesting because <laughs> you're going to see people just like hate it. the whole first six months to a year of, you know, this mile sucks, this mile is good. It's going to be so irrelevant until you mm-hmm. see people consistently over a few events because someone's going to win an event. Like maybe what's going to happen is whoever the, the winning team might be for the WTC, they're going to win and people are like, well, that's obviously the best stuff and it's a broken. Yeah. But maybe it's trash and no one just was used to that thing. Yes. So it's going to be fun. I mean, it's like the gimmicks of, you know, the Blightbringer right now. Like when it first came out. Everyone's like, oh my god, and then, you know. Yeah, I hope now. to see more. I mean, we have eight or nine teams, which is which is like four. I mean, it's eight. It's five people per team, so that's, you know, yeah. 45 plus people we're already talking about. And I know there's a few teams who are really slow about registering that are going to go that just haven't signed up. And there's a few people even in Madison who are still trying to, like, get those last couple, yeah, couple we got, bodies. Yeah, um, I was talking to Travis not too long ago, but it was either last week or the week before, and he was like, we have eight teams, and the female team, and the two the the remnants of Milwaukee and Madison yeah. each formed another team, so that was three additional teams yep. at least. Yep. And um, hopefully we can get word out there that like the WTC teams could come. Yeah. So that would be kind of a good a good place for them to start with at the very least. I mean, even if they 
get raffle stomped or roll through all, everyone. It's a good way to get practice in. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole idea behind this is to get the Americas kind of caught up in this and style because we're not used to it. You're going to see so many people playing so much War Machine those first few months because it's, mm-hmm. so, it's, so, it's so new and exciting. It's, yes. It's your same game you've been playing for 10 years, but everything is exciting and new and shiny. And with like the... Oh, what was that new format called? Rumble. 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 Rumble, yes. You know, with that, in addition to all this, you know, it's just... There's so many new ways to play. There's so many... With, with the granularity, there's a lot more different ways to do... Like, Eris is six points. She did flat-out double, but, like, when you're looking at a Slayer that only went up to ten points, you know, you've got so much more variety potential yep. that it could be very, very cool. What do you think, Brian? I think Mark III is going to be pretty pretty revolutionary. I was it. talking to Brian. Oh, God. <laughs> Dang it. I'm sorry. Continue, Brian. Are you, are you sure, Brian? Yes, I'm sure. Are you sure, Brian? Yeah, I'm sure, I Brian. am sure, Brian. Other Brian, are you sure? He's yeah. drinking. Stop drinking. He's not other Brian either. Oh. <laughs> You're other Brian. Oh, I am Brian, motherfuckers. You're Brian, too. That's too We're all Brian today. Fuck. It's so funny. But, yeah, I, I think that with all the changes coming in Mark III, you're going to see a lot of lists. Like like you said, they're not going to be exactly the best, or not the best, I guess is a poor way to say it, but the more efficient lists won't come yeah. out right away. The most you're, finely tuned. Right. You're going to have a lot of lists that are going to be, you know, oh, this worked out really well in this situation, but the only way to tell if that list is going to be good later on is constant playing, mm-hmm. more presentation of it, and then, like, like you said, like six months down the road, you're going to see definite patterns emerging. These casters are going to be used more often. You know, these these uh, list compositions are going to be used more often. Mm-hmm. And then with the introduction of the new th- uh, theme lists and stuff, the tiers, that'll be really interesting, to, too, to see how they play, because that's like a whole... Having a, a theme list, irrespective of caster, could present a lot of different combinations that might tilt the advantage towards that list in particular. Mm-hmm. So. And I, I actually really like the thought behind that. I I could see, like, what I'm hoping... No, this is wild speculation at this point, but I'm hoping for, like, generic, the entire faction can take this theme force, and then, like, maybe reduce a couple of them to just a few casters. Mm-hmm. Like, um, for Scorn, like, Xerxes and Makeda, mm-hmm. like, the Xerxes 1, 2, Makeda 1, 2, 3, and... Naresh, maybe, or someone like that, like can take this theme force because they're more along this line. It seems like it's going to be all casters are going to be eligible for it. Though. They yeah. said they yeah. said that, but I'm hoping that they also kind of more selective, yeah. do like, a little bit more selective on. Well, some it of might them. just be the choices are going to make it. I mean, they might not make it selective by the rules, but That's you'll true. go okay. Well, based on the models, it'll, yeah, it'll, like it'll, a fist list will always be best with a defender's ward caster. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what's interesting too is that when you look at until you see everything, your mind is you're open to all these possibilities. And I guess I'm weird because I don't get too negative until I see everything. I mean, there's people like I'm going to suck us up. I'm like I'm going to sell my stuff. I'm like okay. I mean, <laughs> sell it to me, please. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'll take your stuff. You I'll take that, yeah. Kricks. <laughs> Over <Overreactive. laughs> yeah, But it's interesting. It's like when I look at Scorn, I love my Scorn. But I'm like, man, I Planes vs. Two has made me really appreciate not having a gladiator all the time because uh-huh. the gladiator is like this. Like if you want this, because two inches is a, is a big deal for your beast. So you want Rasha all the time, but. Yes. And it would be so amazing if like that didn't exist anymore. If if they somewhat got some some other way to get faster, but not always anchored to an eight point beast, in this new world with their big battle groups, it may not be even relevant. That may not may, may not be a relevant fact. But I imagine we're going to see some potentially slowing down of Scorn because in Mark One, uh, Scorn was, Scorn was not fast in Mark One. Yes, Mark Two they became fast, and everyone in the in the playtest is like, we, thanks, but we wanted to be what we were. Now you made us this new thing. Yeah. So I, and we and I see a lot of throwbacks to Mark One in here. Not mm-hmm. not. Not the power scale, but kind of because the, there was a theme in Mark One that got out of control towards the end, mm-hmm. and I wonder if we're going to see kind of a more of a back to the origins and in some ways because I mean the bone chickens kind of got cheaper, cricks in some mm-hmm. ways kind of went back to the you know what they were uh, without the power insanity. I just wonder if we're going to see that in Scorn if Scorn will just keep staying super fast. Um, yeah. it's hard to say. I mean, like with Dilators, they're they're kind of a staple unit of the faction. Um, well, if they lose reach. That will be a huge thing towards... Yeah. And if Makeda 2 loses Road to War, that'll be a huge thing towards scaling it back into more reasonable ranges. Yeah. But also, I don't know, I've liked, I've appreciated the fast. I never played it in Mark 1, so I never got to know the... You never had an Ancestral Guardian kill multiple casters in a turn nope. laughing the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh. I, never got, I never got to blind everyone. 
Oh, that's everywhere. coming back. <laughs> no, yeah. not quite. It's not going to be quite the same not, thing. Oh, no. You should never get Ghost Sight again. <laughs> sure. Sure. But um, so, any wish list for you? Uh, I I think the thing right now that I'm like, and I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Cyrus as a faction, but I think... It seems like every t- every time they've said something that somehow relates to that faction, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Hmm. And it really feels like that faction is getting treated like shit right now. <laughs> They're part of it. They get to move all. They get to move all three when they power induct us. Well, they don't. I mean, not even just all three, but they get to do it to three. They get to move all the focus, which but is kind of cute. But now we're getting to talk about how it seems like between retailers and between all the retailers and distributors they can't figure out if they're going to sell you a third of the cards for the same price so all the decks li- wow. are 19.99 every single one of them huh. and the cyrus one is like 51 cards compared to like the maybe deck, it's which thicker <clears throat> card stock and they already said that a lot of what's going on with Cyrus right now is going to transfer over almost directly well not almost directly but they said a lot of it's going to remain the same because I mean, they were designed with Mark III in mind. And they, I mean, they've done very well. And they're not getting a battle box. And they're not getting anything else except for the Prime Conflux. Woohoo. No, they're going to get a. No, they said they were going to get a new caster. Maybe in a year from now. No, no, no. Not they even. They said in, in the Forces book. They, they're the going, for, yeah, to, the they're going to release a Forces book. I think that's not happening for six months huh. at least. So everybody's going to be super, a small everybody's gonna be super excited for Mark III. It's going to be a heyday for everyone. Especially minions players. Yes. And Cyrus is going to be like, well, super sweet. Thanks a lot. They should have just raised them up to the L- to the level of being like, we're kind of a real faction now. But I think that's just what the forces book bump. is going to do. Well, right, I think right, it needed right, to happen faster. I don't know. They bumped right up to main faction status. You can't get everyone. It's, you got to like, you know. I think it's just like people put their money into the faction, and yeah. I, I'm sure there's a lot more people who um, are fine with with what what's what the direction is of Cyrus right now or what they've found out about it. Mm-hmm. I just feel like they're not getting... Um, I, I have a feeling that they're not going to get treated the same as any other faction. And I understand that they weren't made with that in mind, but I don't think when anyone heard that, that they thought that it was going to be that long before they actually got things. I don't, I don't know. I, mean, I guess uh, I don't know how many people just play that as their only faction. Like you, know, I, I mean, I'm sure there are someone came into the game, saw mm-hmm. that, and didn't know, oh, this is a minor faction, and went into it. But I think so many people who play that have a secondary, have a, another faction that's going to get all this new, night exciting things. But it's hard to say. I don't know for sure. Yeah. Do you, do you think it's going to coincide with the new the new release or announcement of the Hordes faction? That's probably that. I'm, I'm that, sorry. That's a that's, full year away. That's another thing. It's like a new Hordes faction has been designed, which I know that Hordes really need. They don't need another faction, but as far as like how what War Machine's gotten out mm-hmm. of it, it's nice for them to get another one. But I feel like if they set the precedent of like Cyrus gets treated this way as a brand new faction, when I think it should have been treated a little bit more like Retribution, which I think grew at a faster rate than Convergence did. Um, well, yes and no. Like, it was released just, just, just before Mark II. And it was mm-hmm. released with Mark II rules. Yeah. Um, and then, over the past few books, you've seen them slowly catch up. They've gotten more out of the each of the... Compa- what do they call them? The, just, uh, each each of books. the books. Yeah. 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 <laughs> each of the... Not the forces of books, but the... I think Red has a chance to really evolve because that damn unit, their AD unit that can ignore Land of Sight and ignore Focus and Fury has, yeah. has fucked over that faction so hard in design space that I think if they're actually able to make that unit not be so broken, they can actually put buffs in that faction. They can do all sorts of things in that faction. Yes. And then, I even think the players who play the faction want that unit to get nerfed so the yes. rest of the... They want to give, stop making this unit too good but make everything else better. I yes. think it's like, it would make everyone... I mean, losing faction. Phantom Hunter would probably alleviate 90%. Phantom Hunter or even just the Arcane Assassin part. Is it, is it, is it, Arcane Assassin. Yeah, yeah, they even remove one of those two, I and think. Bust. Yeah. Or so they, ignore, they ignore everything. Yeah. Yeah, Except for elevation. Tone them down, and then your rest of your faction can rise up. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. you'd, you'd see a lot of exciting retribution players. Well, I think if anything opens up design space, it'll be the elimination of the theme forces in Cyrus. Because, like, that's everything. I mean, their battle box is a theme force. So, mm-hmm. And right now, everything gets taken in theme forces. So it probably hindered their their growth They're more than anything. But And, and I mean, they did <clears throat> admit when they first talked about Cyrus that it was going to be a limited faction. Like, that's always been part of... The yeah, they, with Cirrus. Now with the Forces of book, they can, they might remove that limited from it. Mm-hmm. And with the Forces of, they get you know a huge bump in 
units and, and jacks and things. But they'll and never have yeah. character jacks. They're always going to be more... A little bit more railroaded than most factions. Because they yeah. don't have the character possibility. They're not supposed to be an independent thinker army. So... And, and limited that'll... isn't bad, because if, if you're limited but everything is a good choice, even if it's less, as long as it it's functions well and it's kind of fun and it does mm-hmm. its thing, sometimes it's like, man, because sometimes I look at my score, I'm like, I could take a million things. Sometimes I wish I didn't have as many choices. I mean, it's like, you know, when you just have the <laughs> like little things. Like Guardians yeah. or Immortals. <laughs> yeah. No, otherwise, I'm I'm more more so wanting to see what it, what is going on with Trolls, because when I mm-hmm. saw the Mountain King and the changes to that, I was like, you gotta be fucking shitting me. They put rage on my colossal. That really blows. Your Mad so, 8 colossal. N- now, well, the, it doesn't matter. The thing, the what it gets up. Mad 8 is is kind of weird too when you when you think about it. Yeah. That 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 deafening on his spray. Yes. It's like he's either gonna be hitting something he's gonna kill, so it doesn't matter anyways, or he's gonna be hitting something that he's meant to kill, like a heavy. I think it, the the great thing about that spray is if you because tell, of, if you tell me it's because you can't get or receive orders, I want no, to no, find no, no, something no. that survives it. No, 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 that's not even that's not it. Actually, I think the great thing about it is it, it allows you to kill things like uh, circle heads. Currently, I mean, trolls didn't and, have that problem though. Well, Matt six. It, the if you if you look in the form of the Mountain King, sure. But trolls in general, yeah, but we don't know does how not much of it's gonna, like I, again. So much of it's <clears throat> postulating. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I know. It's, it's at all... you, but like, <clears throat> yeah, like we don't know what 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 his what he's gonna represent of the trolls faction. What Maybe I can tell you that he will represent is the Mauler's not gonna have rage anymore because I don't think there's Maybe. one no, faction won. that repeats an animal. But who knows what he? I mean, the Mauler gets old. Maybe maybe the Mauler gets stronger by default and suddenly gets some other mm-hmm. cool animus. That's like who knows what can go there. I have this crazy conspiracy Tenacity. theory that like <laughs> the <laughs> mountain the good. mountain king has rage. Yes. And the archangel has dragon fire. Those were those the those two animus are really um, linchpin to a lot of those two factions' plans for yes. playing. So, like, they're gonna if they reshuffle like other animi to like the Mauler doesn't have rage anymore. He gets rush, and then the Axer just gets something weird. Like maybe he I gets a monk. You, you don't want from Scorn's perspective. You don't want that. You I know I don't. I don't on, want it. On a light. <laughs> I want <laughs> rage. I want rage back. I'm a goddamn heavy. No, I mean you don't. I mean, you, don't, you, don't you don't want rush. You don't. You don't want rush on a heavy. You don't or, want rush on a heavy. Or the other like, thing is like, hopefully they just like that change ends up echoing throughout the rest. So you, of the you might faction. see a plus one strength or a plus one power to all of. Well, now I don't. Trolls. Yeah, that's the thing is I don't want my my like Borka to be like. How fourteen or something like I can't remember yeah. exactly what he is right now. Well, they, I mean, we already know they're going to change a lot about the troops because well, the, of rage because it's now war beast. Yeah, only. it's war beast only. So I'm hoping that the my beat stick guys get more beat sticky mm-hmm. and that my heavies for nine points aren't power. Your range miles are probably all got a, a, a boost to their they, range. They said now. that, yeah, because now yeah. you don't have to worry. About that's, your, that's a great thing for bombers. For range score 12. and trolls are great. Are happy with that change? Yes. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I just I, I think like the. I get more like doom and gloomy when I see these little changes, and mm-hmm. I kind of want more of a big picture. And I know this faction overview is probably going to do a lot more for that, but I just yeah. I really want to see something that I s- really like about the faction, um, just spoiled completely. Like I want to I want to see like Eborka's card. <laughs> I need to see it. Well, yeah, I mean like Kator, I, my other faction, Kator hasn't seen shit. Which factions have been spoiled? Well, spoiled so far. Just Kirk's Kirk, Kirk got the Kirk. most information. Tri- well, b- because. Previously, they thought they had gotten the least. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Kirk's just got spoiled. Uh, I, th- but they're the only ones that have seen a caster card, right? Kirk's has seen their full like one full, full caster, caster card. card. Yeah. All of Danny, yep. Um, and from it, we actually inferred a whole ton of things, like negative speeds no longer a thing. Can't which charge. Is awesome. Can't charge friendly more. Which can't is which, is, a very, which is a very interesting thing because that's. There's so many cast. It's that it that it really messes with casters with a pulse ability, but not the aura ability. So any caster who has a pulse gets kind of nerfed by default because they can't charge your own. Because normally you put your own guy mm. forward, charge him, and then feet, and then you pulse and get people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now the aura, you can cast your feet aura, then charge. So if you're a pulse caster, you get nerfed by that I ability. Th- and own. they might change that though. True, true. I mean, that, I mean, exactly. might switch knows? all to auras. Like, there's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff up in the air. One of the yeah. things could be like any time during activation events too. Yeah. Maybe they'll change that to make things a little bit more fluent. And 
Apparently. I'm honestly I'm surprised Nathan because Nathan Nathan isn't the biggest fan of the change the charge change and I was afraid I, I figured he's like he's gonna wait outside the door until we talked about it walk in and then <laughs> complain about it and then, like, leave again like because like, a Brian Cass with five minutes of Nathan ranting and then he'd, he'd wander <laughs> off but he well, can he can rant in the chat because he's in the chat I may I'm I'm honestly looking back thinking that it makes sense and I was surprised it didn't come sooner because of the sidestep change that happened yeah. early in Mark One. Where you couldn't sidestep, like it used to be Mola Kern could yep. sidestep off of friendly annihilators and things like that. And it's just like that all of a sudden was changed. I didn't even realize well, that was a rule like, until yeah. it had been nerfed out. You could get wow. souls off your own people. They mm -hmm. really, well, certain things to, can still do that, but the vast majority of soul collection is enemy 90%, 95%. Except for Protectorate and Scorn, and that's kind Correct. of the score. Well, it, but the that's, are but, it's, but it's not based off your own attack. You score and get oh, their own enemy souls. Attacks, yeah. mm -hmm. But in Mark 1, my sister, I would kill my own miles around my sister guardians, power them up, and they would charge. Did it say it was turn or pulse, Radia? Yeah, she's a pulse, so she's just, she's, yeah. Hmm. Yep, I, so, I, I so didn't pulse. look at it close enough. I didn't. I'm see sorry, I wonder if any of the auras are going to stay because I mean the pulse. Yeah, because she's a pulse. I'm just, I'm just curious because like I said, uh, with the charging, the pulse and the aura thing affects too. The yeah. auras just feel weird sometimes too because like I think Grim One is is one of those guys where his feet turn gets really confusing for some people because like it's neg three speed. So if they run, I think newer players sometimes even I forget how to how to rectify it when. They run. They start running from outside of his aura and then get into it. Like what happens? So like, hold on, math time. Like you ran six, but your speed's half. So now this is this, yeah. and then this happens, and then judge. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I need to judge. Well, I mean, but like some auras need to stay in place, like Urusk one. Correct. I mean, there are. So I, they can't get rid of them. I mean, that's yeah. just. I don't think possible. They or, can. or, or, or they, they, okay, they or, could. Or, or, he'll be complete, or he'll have a completely redesign. I imagine we'll. I imagine we'll see both pulses and auras after this. It's just. Probably. It just. It's interesting that the charge thing does affect the pulse people more than the aura thing. Mm -hmm. But yes. someone like Rusk is not going to be feeding and charging forward. Probably. I've done it. <laughs> well, I mean, now you're you're looking at the ones who the that gets affected the most by are the assassination casters that have weird ways of extending their threat. Yep, Kane like 2, Kane 2 yep. Butcher 3. Those guys their game is completely changed as far as threats concerned. Ah, uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I you yes, you could always charge the dog in the butt and then energize her out, but like I never I never did that. Then you you haven't caught people the right way. Well, no, I always <laughs> catch them the other way. I just charge them. <laughs> And then not stomp them when I pull them in. It's just a, a, the twenty-one inch threat on Butcher is real, and it, and now it's not. I mean, now it's. I mean, if it, it's just okay. Now you have to energize her first to make sure you get an enemy model. Well, and that, like I said, I mean, we're still transposing other rules. Yes, exactly. But, um, at the at the base rate of it, charging other models is gone is fine by me. I'm as long as they don't get rid of attacking your own models because so many times they'll just like pump a guy in the back. So well, you can. I, can clear I mean, you can still charge range. They said bowling, bowling is still a good thing. Yeah, and mainly so. I think because that, that still lets that that stops that lets the beasts do it, but not things. Grim speed is a pulse essentially. Well, I guess I beginning didn't your need someone to it. tell me. All right, <laughs> well, we need a judge. We need a judge to tell if there's no judge. So it's still a judge was involved. <laughs> so Brian, <laughs> Menoth, what are your hopes and dreams for changes? And by the way, I, I do you like Harvey because I just have this gut feeling <laughs> Harvey is going to just get. They're gonna take that thirteen-year-old back and just shoot him. I've been hearing that a lot, and I don't, I don't know necessarily that Harvey will necessarily be nerfed per se. I imagine it might be changed somehow. Yeah. and it really, we, we should probably stop saying nerf because they're all being toned down. It is yeah. a nerf, but the game is being toned down. But, well, yes so. and no. I mean, rebalance doesn't. It, I think, like Mortal Two, we've seen goes yeah. up. Correct. Um, I, I mean, there go are on with true. what you're gonna say, yeah. but I have, I have some thoughts on Harbinger. Continue we'll still right. frame it as nerfs and buffs. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, I mean, it is, yeah. Anyway. Well, I mean, like with, with Harbinger, I guess specifically, I think uh, a lot of people have had issue based on her her awe ability. Yeah. Within, currently, you know, within her command, and then also her martyrdom ability, one uh, d three damage, save a life, um, and then the twenty inch uh, feet aura or pole. Yeah, no, it's an aura. I mean, with the with pre measuring now, I think that kind of alleviates a lot of the gotchas with that. Mm -hmm. you know, oh well, I'm within twenty suddenly. Oh, crap, it dies. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to guess. Um, that really wasn't an issue before, though. I mean, honestly. But as for Harvey herself, will her damage she takes go up? I imagine she might. That would make sense. Maybe like a D6 rather than a D3. Ooh, no. I would say they Maybe might. Maybe D3 plus one. Well, with the increased uh, battle group size, 
I think you'll see a lot more jacks with Harvey rather than a lot more infantry, especially if they're... But the infantry is going to become that much more important to her. It could, especially with the lack of health boxes that they have now, mm -hmm. because although they haven't confirmed or denied with the exemplars, yeah, but, you know... No, they're down to five. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, like, you're talking... I'm sorry, I'm talking bastions. Yeah, the bastions the, are... I'm talking... Medi are you talking medium bases? Right. Yes, all, all medium bases except for Mana Wars are down to five. Okay, well then, yeah, I mean... In that scenario, yeah, just since due to their lack of health and depending on what changes they've made, mm -hmm. you know, that could in fact affect completely how you build Harvey. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I feel like they won't ner I feel like they won't take her to a D six or a D three plus one because if they are, like they're in the points of the game are shifting more to that battle group heavy, so you won't be able to take as much infantry with her. Yeah. So I think I think it'll just stay the same at D three if she keeps smarter. I, I than think so too. Yeah. Do you have any hopes? Like anything that you want to see happen to Menoth? That you like? Are there things that you can't do that you think would be cool to do? That just I'm just. I want you to guess what's going to happen, and if you're right <laughs> or wrong, you'll seem brilliant <laughs> or dumb. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Centurators might be useful, especially with a potential one-inch reach. Yeah. Maybe not. The I models mean, look cool. It'd be nice to see them on the table more. I know that's the biggest complaint with them. Deliverers never get seen on the table, or if they do, it's very, very rarely. I think it'd be cool to actually have a semi-ranged presence with Protectorate. I know that's not necessarily the case right now, except for with Judicator or Vanquisher or Reckoner. And that's okay. pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, so less Menoth gun line, more tr troop gun line. More troop gun line? With the, uh, I mean, with with the nerf to choir, you can see that happening very easily because right. no plus two to hit. What's the unit that has a cross guy in his back? I always forget the name of that unit. Uh, the zealots. Because you figured the zealot UA is since it's going to be, on, it's, you, can, all, you could have more zealots and more UAs. You have to imagine mm -hmm. that UA is going to get hit with a nerf bat just because if you can take three of them, you, they can't be that good anymore. So, you know, I, you know, I'm curious to see what's going to happen to that particular model. Yeah, that's that'll definitely need to be fixed because being I mean, immune to all damage except for spells or feats, and they can pray not to be targeted by spells. Yeah, that'll be. An I think that would. I mean, all you have to do is get rid of that one, well, and then yeah. all of a sudden things. Yeah, something because yeah, because 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 if it stays, it's obviously not going to stay the same because mm -hmm. if you, you couldn't have three units with that in the front line. It would just it would just be this like insane thing. Even on the same topic of UAs, just as an aside, I think mm. it'd be nice to see the UAs change to a point where it seems optional to take them. Where now, if you, it, pretty, it, I think it's pretty standard, and I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking of one that goes against this. If I take a unit that has a UA, I will never take that unit without the UA. It just won't happen. Yeah, or seeing more variability would be nice, like the Black Dragons have now, where they've got two UAs that you can choose between. I you think always I want one of them. I think throughout Mark Three, we're going to see a lot more of that mm -hmm. happening. Like yeah, like attachments, that. UAs. I think we're going to see a whole diversity of things like that. Occurring. Something to change the existing units right now, or, or just change UAs in general. Like, if you take a unit of Winter Guard with no UA, you either are super, super strapped for points, or you don't know what you're doing. That's the, I, think I mean, that's even the even the all-in-one battle box came with the UA. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's like with the with the uh, the zealots. Like, no one in their right mind would take them without that UA. Right. It's just not possible. Like the only uh, with Vindictus, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like maybe, Vindictive. Idrians are another one. You don't oh. want to take them without their UA, even though oh. that unit costs like a bazillion points on their own. Right. They're right up there with Manowar bombardiers after you put that UA on, I'm pretty sure. I would like to see a Paladin unit. That would be awesome. <laughs> you have one. <laughs> Not a Paladin unit. There's uh, Solos, and then there's the, the isn't, Caster. Isn't the uh, the five-man unit that gets stronger as they die? Mm. No, isn't that a Paladin? Knights. Oh, they're Knights Exemplars. Yep. Gotcha. Potato, potatoes, as far as Benoth <laughs> enough, is yeah. concerned. Um, I, yeah. My thought on Harbinger, though, just to go back to that real quick, I think Purif I would love to see Purification mm -hmm. still on her and as her unique spell. I, I've heard a lot about purification, about how they just want it removed across the board. If, if I'd be anything. fine with that, too, but I think if they if they keep it, I'd, I'd, she should be the one, in my mind. Even over Doomshaper? Because Doomshaper and her are some of the first to have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean... Doomshaper, her, and Krios. Krios, yeah. Yeah, Doomshaper, her, Krios, then you've also got Veil 2 and Lucan. I think that's it. Krios 3. You've got... I didn't... Uh, Nirvana, Nirvana, Nirvana 2. Oh, okay, so... One of the Abbeys. You say Abbey? Veil. Vale. Veil, vale, yeah. yes. Um, almost every faction... Gatton 4. <laughs> <laughs> almost every faction has it, except for Scorn, Kador, and Krix. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Well, minions. There's like seven Wolves. or eight yeah. casters that have it. Yeah. 
I would like to see more about how Merc unit or the Merc contracts work too, or the mm. the lack thereof. Mm-hmm. It's going to be crazy seeing Mercs and minionless. What an easy way for Private Press to make money without doing anything. You can just use whatever you want, put it together. Like, mm-hmm. Boom, everyone's buying shit like crazy. <laughs> a simple. Seeing, seeing the non, non-colossal jacks get bumped up in Mercs would be nice, too. A very important question. What We need a non-war machine topic. Okay. Talk about um, machine. This is still kind of hobby, hobby-related, hobby but I was at a guild ball tournament on oh Saturday in Chicago. So, I walked into that! Don't worry, this is good. <laughs> this is good. So uh, Amanda had her, her goal with a little mermaid with an arm on it. Like, it just was a cool-looking goal. The arm fell off halfway through the tournament, so um, I had to buy glue because I didn't have any there with me. So I got this glue from them called Bob Smith Corporation or Industries glue. It's like in this blue bottle. It's it. I, I didn't realize how liquidy it looked until after this happened, but uh, there was a little, like, instead of having a little twisty nib on the top or something where you can just poke a hole in it with the top of the cap, you had to cut it off with scissors, so mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, uh, this stuff can't be, like, that, like, crazy liquidy. So I just, like, stuck the tip in my mouth and bit it off. So when I pulled back, <laughs> the glue, like, just blew up in my face. So, like, I looked... <laughs> <laughs> I looked like I looked like Ashy Larry. Like my lips were just covered in glue. I had it on my teeth. I just had like I used my sleeve to rub all the glue off of my teeth, and it was in my oh, beard man. too. And I was like, "How much of this am I gonna lose?" And thankfully, it was just a little bit, and I started to chip away at it. But the entire time when I hit round, uh, yeah, that's exactly what it was. It just came in my face it was so rancid like and of course i, I was in shock at first and i was just like what, what the fuck just happened to me and, and, and it, thankfully it came off pretty quick but uh i was reading the back of the bottle and it said in case of contact with face make sure you get unbonded and i'm like name one fucking place that sells that stuff along with their glue nobody it was just it was so fucking frustrating so uh, then, of course, John, one of my one of the people I was there with, came over and he's like, "You should have asked me for glue, and you should have asked me for this and that." And I'm like, "Shut the fuck up!" John put you in your place. Yeah, he he did. So you guys had one car with like eight of you going? Or was it well, no, we had we, it was five of us. It was myself, the Ackers, um, Amanda, and then met Josh Merck. Josh mm-hmm. from Madison came with us, and Cinderella'd me out of uh, Kumas, which ended up turning and turning out to be another big crazy trip of of shit <laughs> so we uh we went to kuma's because i really wanted to eat there and uh they had a 45 minute wait josh didn't want to be out that late so i was like fine we'll just we'll, we'll take off and find somewhere else to eat finding somewhere to eat in that godforsaken state is terrible there's <laughs> either a massive wait or they're impossible to find so we decided to go oh, to that's this, what john's thing was we <laughs> decided to go to this place called meatheads and uh i typed it in the gps and it took us to dick sporting goods and we we're like well it's kind of in a mall area so all, all six of us because we had johnny from manitowoc tag along with us we walked into dick sporting goods <laughs> trying to find some place to eat and i was like I am not in the mood for a fucking power bar right now. <laughs> so I stormed outside and was just like, I'm going to drive until we find a place. And I think uh, Josh or Johnny had said, well, there, it looks like there's a place to eat over there. And they pointed at this uh, this eatery. When we pulled up, we found out it was a bakery. So we skipped on that idea and just started <laughs> driving and driving. And we, uh, Where else did we come up to? We came up to another place. Oh, we went to Joe's Crab Shack because it was the first place I saw. We pull in there, and there's like an hour wait to eat at this fucking crab shack. <laughs> wow. So I said, fuck it. I'm going home, and whatever I find on the way, if it's a fucking McDonald's or Hardee's, yeah, I'm just okay. going to eat there. Yeah. So uh, in Illinois, they don't put what, what – on each exit from their highway, they don't put down places where you can eat at that exit. So I just kept – I said, fuck it. I got to Janesville, and I went to some <laughs> shit bar that has decent burgers, and I got really drunk. And ate some burgers and took everybody home. 
<laughs> it is, yeah. And we, then took everyone. We have actually, when we come back from Chicago, if we don't eat right away, we actually do have in Janesville quite a bit sometimes because it's like, fuck it. Exactly. You just, it's it's a pain I'll, in the ass. Although we will, we will stop for like fast food sometimes. We just not deal with the sit down. Because it is, I mean, it, it can be nice to sit down, but sometimes like, we, got, we got three hours of drive. Let's just get the fastest food we can get and just get the fuck out of here. Well, and it, I, the reason why I was more interested in going to a place that was a little bit more expensive after the tournament is I went to this like uh, next to the gaming goat is or at the edge of the block that it's on is this eater it's this pizza place that kind of just makes everything so like it's like italian polish just a ton of shit so uh i got four slices of pizza for everybody in my vehicle and and, because josh came with me got his own thing and it was like two bucks three bucks a slice or four bucks a slice or something like that and it was like they gave you a quarter of a pizza so i was just like well we we were able to wait long enough to get back to wisconsin to eat but like I spent hardly any money on food while I was there for lunch, so nice. I was like, eh, I'll go someplace cool, and that'll be fine. What game store was this at? Gaming Goat. All right. Yeah, it, there were 28 people, nut to butt, in this small-ass <laughs> game store, and I know like it was great that they hosted it, and Ben did a okay-ish job running it. <laughs> <laughs> His stupid software he was using to pair us up paired everybody first round on alphabetical order. <laughs> like, five people were paired up against people that they drove there with. <laughs> it was just, it was... It was well, yeah. Shit. I mean, it's, and this is first event. Plus, when you get an event, you're like, you get 20 people there, you're like, well, damn. I guess this is getting real. Well, and he just kind of sat back and was eating, uh, if he had honey nut M and M's. All right. This is just strange stuff. They I, he didn't offer any to me, so that fuck son him. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. But uh, oh, it, it was a decent. It's a decent store. They had like a really good stock of everything, and um, they did the best they could with uh, with the space that they had. So it was a, a good experience, other than getting butt fucked out of Kuma's. But I don't uh, know what a Kuma is. So. It's that. It's like this heavy metal restaurant. Oh okay. yeah. They had the Morgul burger at uh, Depticon. Okay. It was amazing. Well, I didn't try the more. Yeah, fuck off! But... I don't want to hear it anymore. That's the first. The, as soon as like, as soon as we left the crab shack, John and Casey were opening their fucking mouths, saying like, "Oh, oh man, oh, that yeah. mastodon burger that I had that one time was so good. Man, that was a great burger." I'm just like, um, I just wanted to break check so bad so they'd bounce <laughs> their heads off the back of my fucking my stupid uh, seats. I'm so sorry, Brian. Whatever. <clears throat> so well, that was my. He does not have an anger. You had fun Chicago playing trip. Guild Ball all day. Me and Brian play Diablo all day. Not with each other because we don't play with each other. Because yeah. fuck that guy. Yeah, I, I have. I have been wanting to play Diablo a lot lately because I, I. Once I hooked up my computer, since I have joined like the world of computers that don't sound like chainsaws when they start up, um, <laughs> I've, I've decided to just jump in and play Diablo two for like the five millionth time, and I was fine with that. Oh yeah, that's the other thing too. Like when Nate's Nate's saying that it's not that far away, it really isn't. Like when we left, uh, sh- when we left Schaumburg or wherever the fuck we were, Schaumburg events in Schaumburg. If it was Schaumburg, it was nice. It was no- more northwestish of Chicago. Yeah, it's just it, it was. It, it took us two hours to get home, and like I drive almost that far to get to Lacrosse when I want to go there. Like I really could just take a road trip and and fuck around. So nice. I would like to bounce the Mastodon Burger off their heads after that comment. But I felt so bad for the, the hostess that was at the Crab Shack. As soon as she said an hour wait, like, Johnny threw his hands up in the air, and I was just like, fuck me. We are leaving right now. We're getting out of this shit state and going home. <laughs> and she just, like, her eyes were huge. It was great. I was just so pissy. <laughs> well, how many hours were you at the event? It was a long, I'm assuming it was a long event. Well, it wasn't that bad. We got done... Um, it had to have been like five o'clock or six. I guess when I think twenty people, I'm thinking five rounds. I'm leaving there at ten o'clock at night. I'm going to be home at three in the morning and fuck my life. Well, due to time but concerns and of a, of a magic event starting, I think it was some release event. But uh, we did the first three rounds, and then they cut to the top four. So after three rounds, if you didn't hit it, you were gone. So uh, and no one, here, no one in the car hit it. No, I I was uh I was close to it. Um. Ben had said that I was the pair that I, that I was playing in the pair down in round three, so I was like, oh, "I'll just fuck around then because I'm just playing against some Owen two, and uh, I just put my list together and it was just like more fun that it, the, the things that I hadn't played that day just to be kind of you know just experience all my all my stuff I brought, and then I found out that I was the one who got paired up to a two and zero, so I would have been the major upset and based on how many. My, uh, every game I played was really close. Like the victory points were just—it was 
one activation off from winning. Um, I if I would have won that game, I would probably more likely than not would have been the person who made it into the top four, and would have experienced a collective groan from everyone that I drove with. <laughs> yeah. It is well for MomCon, Me and Jordan are gonna go, and we're gonna. We're, the goal is to play lots of War Machine. But on Sunday morning, if we don't make Masters, which we're not, we're not really pushing for, it, but you know, if it mm-hmm. happens, it happens. But if we don't, we are gonna get GTFO like Sunday morning, like you know, seven a.m. Yeah. So we neither of us really want to make it. I mean, you know, because <laughs> we kind of want to just get back early and just kind of chill out. I mean, because we're gonna play a ton on Friday and a ton on Saturday, but we don't really have the desire to play three straight days. So yeah, I know that um, we'll be bouncing between uh, Guild Ball and War Machine quite a bit um i know that we're right now we have four in our in our little pot of people that's going but uh um we want to play in the three-man tournament so i have to figure out some kind of process of drunken elimination to see who actually plays in that one the most sober can play the most sober cannot play (laughs) so that's how we're going to go with that one sorry (laughs) well any other stories for us brian Life story, life event. I'm terrible with stories. Are you, st- I don't are you still fired? Yeah, I'm totally fired. All right. No, no, laid off. Laid off. Big laid off. Like I said, well, and our audience is not only you're laid off, but you know, a kid on the way and just got married and just bought a house. Yeah. <laughs> I planned that out. That's <laughs> good okay. stuff. At least I didn't death block myself. Well, does the wife have a high paying job taking care of everything? Yeah. What? You're, you're, <laughs> you're, the, you're the stay at home dad, and your wife can carry all the, carry all the weight. She's a Catholic school teacher. Well, there you go. That's got to pay, you know, minimum. It does. It does. <laughs> well, at least we're in a state that respects teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Wisconsin hates uh. teachers. It's funny because they teach the children how to do things, and we hate them. <laughs> uh, education's dumb. Anyway. Anyway. Sorry. Should, uh, should we move on to a, I don't know if we have any uh, zappy grumbles. I can, I can check the uh, Facebook and the Twitters and the tweets. I know uh, someone, I know uh, Green was asking about his butt. We haven't talked about Green's butt in a while, and he was sad. I don't know. Here's a question from Jim Goff. Jim Jeff. Jim Jeff. Jim Jim. That's what I'm going to say. Which of you will be the most, the one to receive the final quickening? I guess we're going to have to have a battle royale right now and see who who the, the final Brian will be. I think I'll make it. You think he'll make it? probably manipulate you guys. Well, we would start off by other. throwing you. We have to fight you first, and then, you know, from there we go. <laughs> I think I can just take all of you on. It's fine. He's had alcohol. It makes him immune to pain. Exactly. It happens with Gary Busey every time. <laughs> I just think about my childhood, and I get ex- really mean and mad. So it's I, re- I have years of reserved hate build up in me. We'll see if you guys can beat me up around my erection. <laughs> <laughs> you, know I mean? you get in a fight, you immediately go erect. That's like a, it's like, like stage one of a fight. <laughs> exactly. It's like, a, it's like an extra weapon. <laughs> It's his version of getting larger. You know? if, I, if, I, if I hold both my arms out and have an erection, it's like I'm a triceratops. <laughs> and then I run at you at full speed, and three feet before I hit you, I stop and have a heart attack. <laughs> well, good to know. Well, that's that nice. was our only Facebook twit slash tweet. Oh, that's so sweet. That was a nice thing to say. Yeah. We're, I'm the sexiest. Well, I think he said uh, Brian's the sexiest. Uh, yeah, that's me. Mm-hmm. No, I think he was talking about the other Brian. Yeah, I think that's not a he. I think it's time to fight. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that's Celeste. Oh, oh. <laughs> you got some competition, Brian. That's all I'm saying. I know. <laughs> I'm over it. Sometimes my phone is confused as to what day it is. No, our only tweet was from Green asking about his ass. We even because his 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 bud is our official sponsor, which is a little weird. But uh, is it going to be like that Assy McGee type situation? Does his butt have its own bank account? <laughs> Assy McAss face. Yeah. Smith <laughs> John went live eight minutes ago. Oh no, <laughs> Moose Machine. That was kind of anyway. Yeah, the left. the new the new network for them. Dun 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 dun. So I guess we can go to. If we don't have anything else, we can go right into recommendations. Unless Brian has a story for us. <laughs> Another story? Oh, you're really pushing for it. I know. Here. I want a story. Tell uh, us all a story. Make it interesting. No, he's no pressure. Tell us about like the quiet Brian's gonna sit there and talk to us about how he burned his Sunday school down or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got the blood clot story. What? We we've been recording for six hours. We are on uh, forty minutes. Can't be winding down now. We're winding down. <laughs> Brian's get to the point and then they move on. Exactly. One of us has an erection. <laughs> 
It's so we take turns with it, though, so there's only, only one erection at a time. We didn't have any zappity grumbles to go over. No one zappity us. No one grumbled us. We, well, it's about Chris Green's butt. Yeah, we, we took care of it. Oh, someone's asking if we're going to play Battleborn on the PC or no. PS4. PS4. Andy's going to play on the PS4. I don't know. I Have won't be getting it to it? June. Well, Battleborn looks cool, but I just, like, as I mentioned earlier, there's 17 mm. games coming out in May. So no matter what, I'm playing well, Battleborn's it. Battleborn's out now, I think. No, it comes, out like, it comes out like in a week. Oh. So no matter what, I'm playing it zero days in May. <laughs> in June, I will probably get it, and I'll probably go to the system where the people who started playing in May are still playing it in June, whoever the most number of people are, I'll, I'll join them. Andy's going to have a shiver and drop that chair on somebody's head. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I heard there was Brian's talking on the podcast. Yeah, there, so there are Brian's. Take care of one of them. Yeah. What do you think of the fact that PP's Monster Apocalypse is being made into a movie? I've never played Monster Apocalypse before, well, but so two, my but like, entire reaction was, okay. Well, what's interesting is like five years ago, it got this big hype about a movie coming. It got bought, the rights were bought, and then and then things happened. And the game vanished, and they refused to talk about it. And now suddenly, like two days ago, there's all this nonsense, mm-hmm. all this thing I love again about it again. So it's interesting. I mean, a movie about giant monsters fighting each other can't not be good, because I like monsters fighting each other and breaking things. It's pretty much the core concept of what I would want to see in every movie. So we want more Pacific Rim. Yeah, I think we should have a movie. I think all movies should have crossovers. Like I've you did hear about that, though, right? Yes. Pacific Rim 2 is yep. officially in the tank. Yep. But things I like, I, I, I always saw it like District 10. Like District 9 is a, right. is a yep. great movie. Mm-hmm. I wanted like a movie to start, and it, you think it's a romantic comedy with like, Ryan Reynolds and somebody. And then like half, like half a quarter of the way into it, suddenly they look up and like aliens are coming down. And it's like the return <laughs> from like, like, you killed our friends, we're back for you, motherfuckers. Or you know, something like, well, like, you, know, you think you're watching a romantic comedy, and suddenly Godzilla just walks through, <laughs> and like, boom. And it's just like a, a, but in today's world, it's really hard because of uh, all the spoilers on the web. You can't sneak things out. Andy is waving his arms at me. He's feeling left out what's happening. MIB 23! Yes, exactly. A great crossover. Men in Black crossing over with 21 Jump Street. I love 21 oh, Jump yeah, Street. That's right. I heard. 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Streets are amazing movies. The fact that the third one is going to be a crossover with Men in Black <laughs> is the most ridiculous, beautiful thing I have ever heard. It won't be Tommy Lee Jones or Will Smith, sadly. Unless things change and they get pulled into it. But as of right now, it's going to be just... Smith wasn't on it. Uh, at last I read, it was going to be just two other agents. Because, I mean, okay. there's plenty of men in black. Yeah. It can be whoever. But, obviously, the, the more they have of them, the better, it, the more official it feels. Mm-hmm. But I love cr- stupid crossover stuff. Nathan, did Nathan not hear about the men in, the men in black 21 Jump Street nope. thing? Yeah, it's the most... It, at first, people thought it was a joke. But now it's got a director. It's got... They're moving forward. It's like it's happening. The, the company who produces the movie had like a big spiel on what they were doing that was still involved. So, it's going to be... Oh, he's... It's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Like Fast and the Furious and like, you know, Driving Miss Daisy. Just <laughs> takes it in the direction. <laughs> <laughs> Even that, that's too, that's too related though, maybe, you know. Like Philadelphia and Fast and the Furious. Like, what? <laughs> Lawyers dying of uh, AIDS and now they're racing. I don't understand. But yeah, no. So you just need to combine two things at all times. That would make me happy always. Okay. It's, it's, it's pleasing me as simple. Just mash up, mashing up things together. Mm-hmm. I have a very simple brain. Yeah, it works. But mostly giant robots and giant monsters fighting. You, you don't have to mash that up because that's a good that's enough just core right. concept. But if they do mash it up, you know, it's like the old Godzilla versus Bambi. You know, very simple. <laughs> very, you know. Rank George Miller's films. Ugh. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he uh, He made a couple good ones and some crappy ones. Is that an acceptable answer, Nathan? Oh, he's... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's all... It's so weird. Yeah, the, the fact that... It, yeah, George okay, Miller's so th- it goes Thunderdome, Road Warrior, Mad Max, Happy Feet, Babe 2, Fury Road. Uh, from bottom to top. I think. All right, I was like... <laughs> I was like, you're going to dangerous... I was, I was letting you finish. The Thunderdome was a good movie. Fuck off. <laughs> Thunderdome is a bad movie with a lot of goodness in it. It's, it's amazing. A, it's got the fat, blind Asian guy who plays an amazing saxophone with I, Tina Turner. I like Thunderdome, but I, I, I recognize it's not a good movie. But I do I do love parts of it a lot. And I would never... I, okay. I think it's very enjoyable. 
I enjoyed Mad Max. Yes, Mad Max enjoyed, one is the worst. That's the thing. I enjoyed Thunderdome way more than Road Warrior, Mad, or the Mad Correct. Max one. Yeah, the very first one was just garbage. Oh, yeah. Road, no, it goes Mad Max, then Road Warrior. Road Warrior is two, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the original Mad Max is... is, is two just, is the one that people know. Okay. As the good one. I didn't like Happy Feet or Babe 2, either. Happy Feet was cute. Yeah, sure. I'm going to tell you this. I'm just saying that. <laughs> I was doing this might be shocking to you. Happy Feet is not really meant, made for you. <laughs> <laughs> they had a, they might have had a bed diagram of No, it four. does. It has the seals eating the penguins at one point. Well, yeah, but I'm just That would have been happy for him. Yeah, he like <laughs> a moment or so. But in general, you were not really considered in there. Like, uh, Brian Kerr might not like the film. We're going to go ahead anyway. That's what they had a conversation <laughs> Okay, with. so we do have one Zappity Grumble. So, favorite heroes of the Storm character. That's a hard one because I have a lot of favorites and it changes constantly. Okay, so what is your current favorite? Uh, I love Dahaka. He's actually the second newest character. He's a mm-hmm. tank. And uh, I actually I can't think of the Worgen's name suddenly. Greymane. Greymane. Greymane, I love the fuck out of him. Okay. I have I have three characters over to I have one character at 12, which is Thrall. I fucking love Thrall. I got fucking Gazlo at 11, Abathur at 11. I can oh, play those Abathur? guys. Yeah, Abathur, I still have more games with Abathur than anybody else. I played him... Like he's a fr- when, I, when I got in Heroes of the Storm, my first three months was just Abathur. Huh, yep. like, it, and it's interesting because when, when I'm playing games, people never know what the fuck is going on in the map. And I'm, I, no matter who I'm playing, I always know where people are because when you play Abathur, all you do is you stare at the mini-map. So I'm always like, I always know where everything is at mm-hmm. all times because I just played Abathur. That's I, what you're doing, yeah. I still, even from playing this game for like a year and a half later, I still have not accounted for as many games with anyone else as Abathur. <laughs> Just because I played him so much, Do you I've play? been oh. I've been meaning to to play it, but uh, I don't know. We'll it's see. Free. Yeah, I just uh, I just don't know if I want to put myself in in that position. There has been a lot more people playing it's Heroes of the Storm lately again. I think because yeah. of Overwatch and Diablo, there's mm. things. Blizzard has There's this that, fucking synergy did, of nonsense. They going did, on. and then they also just had Worlds, Spring Worlds. Yep. Um, Heroes and of the Heroes of the Dorm. Mm. So all that's kind of gotten a lot of people revved up again. Um, <laughs> and I still think I am more. I, I, and because Joe with random angry internet kid is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian, do you play it at all? Yes, I, I love playing it. I usually, unfortunately, I play it against bots. As, yes. As other Brian knows, I guess primary. I don't know what. No, I, I, I always see you playing against bots. I'm like, oh, that poor sad person. <laughs> yep. Uh, we've been up in the difficulty, but yeah, uh, I used to play Apathy. It was my jam for a long time. Um, after that. It kind of goes around. I love Som- Sonya for a while, and mm-hmm. then I think they nerfed her at some point. She, she got, she got, she got hit pretty hard. <laughs> she's, she's back though. She's she's she's, pretty, she's, up, she's high up there now. I can just quality. tank like right through stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think Uther was the reason why I got in the game because I love Uther. I got the uh, space medic Uther. Oh, I nice. love that skin. Yeah. Um, but I, just, I can't play him very well. Mm-hmm. And then Tarande. Tarande is my favorite right now. Okay. She's just a great support and great offense. Yeah. So. Um, when I started, it was Vala and Sylvanas, um, but I do like Tracer a lot right now. She is basically, if you play her right, unkillable. Yep. Tracer is really crazy. What I learned to do with Tracer is I never shoot where she's at. I can get her more than not. You never aim at Tracer oh, when God you're no. firing at Tracer. Yeah. <laughs> you fuck. Especially when she, when she goes deep, you know she's teleporting out, so I just turn around and I start unleashing hell where she was a couple seconds ago. <laughs> and every so often, you catch a player pretty good because like, I'm going to teleport to safety, and why is everything exploded around me? Because I'm fucking here, motherfucker. <laughs> and Greymane just r- rips her apart. Yes, Greymane, Greymane um, Luther is actually a really good counter to her, too. Yeah. Like, anyone that has an immediate stun yeah. just rips her a new asshole. But she's powerful. You can't... She's one of the heroes you don't run from. If you're if you're dying, you just fight her to you because you can't get away. So you just do what you can because you're going to die if you're low on health. I also, like, all day today I played Johanna. Oh, my God. I forgot how much I loved her. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Johanna's pretty good. That is awesome. my favorite. T- she's my favorite tank by far. And she just, like, I have, like, the Roman skin. And it's just, oh, she's. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Brightwing, too. Like, I, I like playing oh, a lot of just random ones. Zool I got on, too, for a, a while. Um, yes. Yes. She has so low health that Tracer, when she starts getting hit, is just, just aft. But if, she, um, Lunara actually isn't that great sometimes because if you time the recall right you just drop she gets to three stacks and then you just drop it when you quit uh recall out so brian uh, i I point him to a brian because obviously that makes sense so people <laughs> are saying, get in the heroes because obviously three brian's like heroes so the fourth brian three must out of four brian's three out of four brian's <laughs> <three. laughs> <laughs> i'll give it a try eventually and and we'll see what what shakes up but it looks like there's another question up there too, and it's about magic. So they want to know which one of us, which of us has played magic, or play magic. And uh, even though it's expensive, do we still think it's good, great, terrible game? Have we played 
any of the newer living card games like Android Netrunner. Magic is critical to the gaming industry because it gets the money into the system. I played Magic the year it came out. I was at Gen Con the very first gen, the very first time it hit, and people were like, what the fuck are people doing in the corners on the ground playing this game? Mm-hmm. By the end of the con, it was everywhere. I didn't, and I played the whole first year. I spent, and I was young, and because I mean I'm old, so I when it first came out, it was many years ago. I spent all my money on it. Because it's addicting. Yes, and that's back before they had format. I mean, now it's such a structure. Back then, you just played, and there was no, there was no system. You just played it well, all the time. Alpha, beta, and then third. Yeah, and then and then they started going into Correct. expansion. So, yeah. so I mean, like my collection, if I had it today, I could retire off of it. But I, 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 I can't regret selling because I, I, I bought into it. I probably spent over seven hundred and fifty dollars on it the first year because I buy, buy it by the box. Like mm-hmm. I still do nowadays. And when I sold out, I got all my money back. So I got mm-hmm. in. So I played a game for a year. Played it a fuck ton, and I sold it for the exact amount of money I got into it for. So, you know, I can't be too sad about that. I played it up until about a year or so ago, um, and I started with third edition slash Ice Age. So I missed out on the big, big card boom, um, big money cards. But uh, I always enjoyed it when I did. The problem is, once again, like I'd get in and out of it, in and out of it. Um, but I sold off my whole collection just so I'd be out for good this yeah. time. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, like, once you start getting back into it, you just start paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars per box, and it's just, it's easy to overspend on it. I started playing Magic in Arabian Nights. Mm-hmm. and uh, So the beginning. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's the beginning. Pretty close to the beginning. Well, I mean, but Arabian Nights was the first. It was the very first, first expansion. Thing. Yeah. Real expansion. Yeah. Um, so I think it was, it was right after Unlimited. But uh, I played up until I was in and out of the game frequently. I'd always sell my collection, get back in, sell it, get back in, sell it, get back in. And uh, I got to the point, I think it was the very first, like the, the first Innistrad block they released. That was when I quit, I cut the game and decided to go into wargaming. I think, uh, like Brian like uh, Brian said, it's uh, it's really... Uh, crucial to the gaming stores in general. No other game makes as much money or pulls as much people as that one does. I also think the game is really good. It's just that the way that the cards get designed to play at a competitive level, it it really loses a lot because you get down to like three archetypes. It's just a rock, paper, scissors game constantly. So um, even in the bad war games, you get a little bit more variety than that. Um, I also never, at a certain point, I stopped buying boxes. The only way I'd do packs is if I was drafting. Mm-hmm. I would just buy singles. That's all I would do because it was the best way to get, the best yep. way to maintain a competitive streak of the game. I played it high. I was heavy, heavily competitive with it, and even when like um, EDH first came out as a format or blew up as a format, I played that one exclusively, and then it warped into a super competitive thing, and that was what mm-hmm. I was trying to get away from. So. I just uh, dropped the game and never looked back, but I'm thankful that it exists. I don't have anything against it or people who play it. Yeah. Uh, I got into it when I was five. Um, you goddamn son <laughs> of a bitch. <laughs> How old are you, 14? 27. Oh, my God. I'm so old. <laughs> so I, I uh, got into Ice Age and Mirage with my dad and just, you know, play with him and my brother for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, all the way up to about, like, about five or six years ago. And then just kind of dropped off. Like, at that time, I was starting to get into 40K more. Um, and you know, minis just chew up all that money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I like I like a lot of the designs and stuff of the cards and how they feel. I usually play casually with like a group of people and we just mess around and mm-hmm. destroy each other. Mm-hmm. I got in, for the second oh. part of that question yeah, as far as the new stuff. Part. I I really like Fantasy Flight's living card game system because a you can get into it and you can just buy a set and you have all the cards. So the cost of a living card game. If it's been out for a long time, it's still expensive, but you still there's no collecting option. You mm-hmm. just buy the sets and you have everything, which is pretty cool. What I found though is I don't get, and I've mentioned this in the past. Like I used to play even Hearthstone, but card games for me, even when I'm winning a card game, I don't get a lot of joy out of them. They don't like I don't feel like a sense of accomplishment. But when I lose a card game, I get a sense of rage. <laughs> so it's really weird. It's low reward, in- insane or hatred for losing. And it makes no sense to me. So I kind of avoid card games nowadays. Uh, I still play some co-op ge- I still enjoy some co-op ones quite a bit. But competitive card games, I think they're neat, but they just... Even when I'm doing well, I just don't get that 
it's because when you win a game, if I win a game, a war machine, a tough game, war machine, I feel like I've accomplished something. I feel kind of cool about it. I'm happy. I won a game. Mm-hmm. But when I win a game, when I win a card game, I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't have that sense of accomplishment. I just feel like I, I just for whatever reason. Yeah, you're going through the motions, right? I mean, like when you sit down to play a card game against someone, you're playing for the win. Yeah. In a card game, you don't get to many points where it's a back and forth struggle. I mean, yeah. you 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 get your moments, but for the most part, it becomes very clear who's the dominator in the situation. Yeah. Whereas with wargaming, I, the, I love the comp- I love being competitive in wargaming, and that doesn't mean I'm an asshole. It means that I enjoy having a equally matched game where we both play to our highest potential, and the outcome isn't decided by me overly dominating the person. That yeah, I'm yeah, and, and that's one of the big things about war games, and especially war machine in general, is even Fuck when. Munchkin. I'm sorry. <laughs> Someone in the chat was being hilarious. Yes, no, yeah. <laughs> um, like, even when things are so incredibly stacked, like, even if someone is being steamrolled, they always have a chance mm-hmm. in, in War Machine and Hordes. Like, they've always got the assassination out. Rubber banding in a card game is hard. It is. It's it may be so that's what makes so. you frustrated when I'm losing, because when you lose, you're just being... They're, they're, you they, know they, it. Your foot is on... They put your foot on your throat. Mm-hmm. And I've played Hearthstone games where some, I'm playing against someone, and they obviously got the game, and they know they have the game. I have the game, but they just they just make it last longer. Yes. And I'm yep. just like, because they, they want you to give up. They want to, they want the victory. They give up. They want you to drag it out. So I, that just makes me mm-hmm. so full of rage. I'm like, I need to hack into the lizard account, find where the person <laughs> lives, and just do things that are not legal. Um, but going back to Hearthstone, like before it became the online card game, it was World of Warcraft, the TCG, and actually, me and a bunch of the Milwaukee guys have like over thirty thousand of those cards wow, <laughs> sitting around. Cards. We used to, me and one of the guys when I was unemployed, would spend weeks reorganizing, trimming, like we'd have, we'd set the limit on the number of duplicates we could have of cards at 30, I want to say. So... I think the only thing that was louder than, in terms of card games dying, than when the the Kaijudo kick dropped, at least in one city, (laughs) (laughs) was World of Warcraft, the card game. Just that, that was... As soon as I heard that, it was just it was crazy seeing the amount of people react to it. Just like they felt so destroyed. Yeah, when it when it went away, I I was very disappointed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, other than that, other living TCGs did we? I I'm I, not a big I played fan. um I played what was War Machines. High Command. High Command. I played that a little bit. Which is like the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, of it was style not not very fun. Um, I love Sentinels. Well, so I don't know if that's universe. really considered Again, a co-op. living TCG. It's, yeah, it's it, a co-op. It, it, it's yeah. living, yeah, it's, it's co-op. So it's, it's uh, that's, but that's my favorite. Me and uh, my girlfriend st- or fiancé still play it um, occasionally. We haven't been able to play it recently, but I'm missing the latest expansion. They have was, a Steam app for that now, Sinless and Multiverse. Right? Yes, they have it on Steam. I've played it on Steam a little bit. It's one of those games when you play it, it's, it's because when you're playing it, there's always a lot of reactions and choosing, choosing that. So when you play the app, it's like you, you're always like choosing reactions whether you're playing the game because it's like yeah. mm-hmm. someone plays a car and now you have to re- choose a reaction for, like, for four players or you know it's, yeah. it's kind of a weird it's a pretty good app but it's a little bit wonky in some ways the, the way it the way sentinels just works is it, it would make it very hard yeah. to work in an app unless everyone was in the same room yeah and then you might as well just play the card well game. most people <laughs> most people play the like the most common thing i see people play sentinels so they'll play sentinels with, like four characters but it's just one player mm-hmm. so they get in the whole it's the most like a single player style yeah. game versus a yeah, well, okay. I've still got actually a few Nex, a few Nexoramus decks sitting around my house. <laughs> see, I see. I should have known this years ago, and you could have given me all the game code cards because I, I could use. Oh, them. I used them. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I played the game then. No, I got, yeah, yeah. That, I got bananas. <laughs> yeah. What an obnoxious way! Here's a card game that people enjoy. Oh, by the way, here's some codes for the game, and some of those cards sold for a lot of money. Yeah, the oh, Spectral yeah. Tiger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you can find one still, holy shit, that's like two or three thousand dollars. Yeah. And it's wow. Just, no, it's a crap card too. It's I garbage. <laughs> I got really excited for LCGs when I saw Doomtown had gone from a collectible to a living card game system, and I just never got my hands on it to try it out. But then uh, the one that I really wished would have would have happened, and I, for all I know, it could have just because I don't pay attention to it, was uh, Legend of the Five Rings. 
Like mm-hmm. I like that as a I like the concept of a of it as a collectible card game. I just it never clicked with me really well. It's there. It's on the fringes yeah. still. It it never really made it to mainstream. No, nah, it it was always Magic in the end. Like every time mm-hmm. I played, I played just played Magic a ton. I think the there's a follow up in there about playing in their competitive events or their formats. Yeah. If like you name it, I've played in it. Any, yeah, right there. Yeah. The red one. Any any type of competitive series I played in, I played in plenty of state champs. Jim traveled to Europe for competitive magic before. Mm-hmm. He was oh. really hardcore into that. He really went all over. He actually, because he was saying, oh, there's so much shenanigans that goes on in those tables. People like arguing, like like they threw, like they basically their team they agreed to like throw around for money for their opponents. You know, just, we'll just give you, we'll, you can have some of the prize board, just drop, we'll take it or whatever. And like, well, sure, you know, paid for their trip or whatever. And there's mm-hmm. all sorts of just nonsense going on. Wow. And he said, you have to be so. There's so many subtle ways of cheating. People do the most ridiculous things. They try to trick you into doing all these things. Oh, yeah. And he's like, half half the half the game is just trying not to be tricked. You know, it's either cheating or be tricked into cheating in an accident. Mm-hmm. And it's a whole. It's a huge just part of the game, and you just have to accept it. Yeah, there are a lot of psychological things you do in Magic sometimes, and it's 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 real dick move. But I think one of my favorite ones was. Um, you ask somebody a bunch of questions that you're able to know the answers to yep. and just fire them one after one after one and then you ask them if they have something in their hand that's something you're not supposed to know and yeah. just by them saying yes or no for six questions in a row they'll answer it and not only that and so there's that and and i've always for there's always been sometimes complaints that sometimes war machine players are, are the gotcha players that they mm-hmm. get kind of the dick moves or they act crazy and they ask because I, I I see the war machine people will be really friendly for much times and you I and I watch a game I know they're being friendly because they're trying to distract their opponent and I always think that because people say it's just like, people that like magic like war machine it, people it has the kind of the combo things people pull and I always think that sometimes we get we see more of that in war machine because we've pulled such a high percentage of magic players they mm-hmm. kind of bring the competitive dickness from magic into war machine sometimes mm-hmm. it's pretty good right now in the community but i think every so often when it spikes up it really comes from the magic environment because there's so much of that inbred into the how you play a competitive game and you're just constantly just trying to manipulate and use a psychological nonsense yeah i think wargaming in general is the depot for a lot of magic players they just transition to it eventually at yeah. some point in time it's it just happens and i think a lot of metas have issues with competitive like i had said being synonymous with being a dick yeah and i just it's and not you, quite the yeah. thing there's it's a difference not, and, and, and good communities will weed it out eventually but sometimes you get a, you get a big turnover at once and it just kind of affects things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it's all about just managing the social situation of the game like you usually just if somebody's a jerk you don't play against them there's a difference between being competitive and being toxic yeah and you just got to wait it out and hopefully hope it goes away or tell somebody tell somebody about it i guess yeah but yeah, that's and, some, and some people want, and some people will never tell someone. I, I drives me nuts when I when I'm coming back from a vet and someone's like, yeah, but my ass opponent was doing this and this. I'm like, well, why did you say anything? Oh, I didn't want to be a dick. Well, they were being a dick. Don't exactly. just take, don't take their dick. I mean, unless, <laughs> that, unless that's your thing, that's fine. But you know, if you weren't asking for the dick and they show you the dick, maybe you should be like, you know, yeah, there's speaking up. There's so many times where I hear War Machine people like just that I've traveled with in groups that go to yeah. a tournament. and There's always like some guy that's there that you just don't like nobody likes playing against them and they do something shitty during the game and you're just like why don't you just fucking say something yeah. just yeah. like tell them to stop being an asshole which always humors me because those same people when i play against, i because i have more of an aggressive personality those people just don't try that shit against me so mm-hmm. i'll play those people have a very friendly game a very good game there's never a problem but but i think a lot of it's because they know they try one thing like that i'm gonna fucking call them out immediately and put them on their fucking place on the spot yeah so they just don't do that against me so just be more of a dick yourself. At least have a more aggressive personality. You know, don't be passive like this, Brian. Oh, oh I call oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of a lot of issues I can encounter is uh, during even tournaments and stuff. You know, someone will make an honest mistake. You know, I meant to do this first. Can I do this? You know, usually it's faux pas. You shouldn't do that in a tournament. But I don't. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not like that. So I'm just like, go for it. But if it comes to to my turn, I'll make a casual mistake. I like, oh, I moved it like half an inch more forward. I'm sorry, can I take that back? No, because that's the critical moment of the game. No more. Yeah. You know, and I, that's I guess, always how it is. Like yeah. turn one, two, you can get away with a lot more. I mean, it's if you're gonna play a certain way, I encourage to play that way always. Right, and that's it's either all or nothing. Yeah. You know, and you just accept the consequences. But if you but yeah. if, but if if, if you are playing someone, Brian, and they're like they ask really friendly, can I take this back? You're you are you're a, a good natured person. It's one of your flaws. 
you are probably <laughs> going to say, sure, you can have that back, regardless of the situation. Because in, in your brain, like, well, I'm being good. They'll be good. We'll have this equal partnership thing going. We're all going to be friends. And then they're just going to fuck you. Well, there's some people I just I just know that aren't like that, so I just nope, just well, see, and, that, and that's good. That's yeah. that's what you. That's a good thing to hear because some people will not take that second step. Well, the, I mean, we play against the same people. Only more often people than can, not, people so. can only fuck you once is what you're saying. Right. You're not you're not a repeat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. <laughs> fuck me once, shame on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Well, there you go. Well, that's good. That's no. a, that's a good approach. Because well, and, and with, I, I, with like Mark III and a lot of the changes that are coming through, especially the pre-measuring thing, mm. there's going to be a lot less of that. Well, can I take that back? No. <laughs> you <laughs> you could have known. Yeah. Yeah, you had every advantage to, to know what's going on. Yeah, and like, I mean, and it'll, there's going to be a lot more cooperation between players because right. I need to know if this is within this. You need to help me know this because it might be key to your things and blah, blah, blah. So a lot of it is, and I think I, a lot of it will go away with. And sometimes it's worse, especially if it's a player who's kind of being like psychological is even like more popular. Like you see this guy who's chatting with everyone, he's super friendly. Everyone's like, oh, that guy must be cool. Because everyone's talking to him, he's mm -hmm. great. And then you play him, he does some dick things. You're like, well, am I wrong? Because everyone was just chatting, he was smiling, yeah, he was fucking friendly. Brian White. Yeah, <laughs> that son of a bitch. He's really nice, everyone seems to like him. And now suddenly he's being dick to me. So now can we do recommendations, Andy? Yeah. All right, well, now we're doing rec <laughs> recommendations. He wouldn't let us recommend things earlier. All right, Brian, who uh, recommends something? Yeah, Brian. Yeah, Brian. Oh, Come well. on, Brian. Come on, Brian. <laughs> Go, Brian. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, recommendations. Um, Diablo 3 new season just came out. It's pretty fun to go through so far to get new stuff, new things, all that jazz. Um, I started to get back into WoW again. Nope. Uh, I don't recommend. No, it. you don't do that. No. You lost your. You, I will be getting into WoW in the summer. You myself. got laid off. You don't. The first place you go is it's not World of Fucking Warcraft. It's, it's just a month. There. Brian That's does what everyone have a says. good counterpoint. <laughs> laid off. I'll play a little bit of WoW. <laughs> oh look, I'm divorced. I yeah. guess I don't get to see my child or yeah. live in a house oh, anymore. I'm divorced. My kids getting their license for the first time. Uh, but I'm level, is, I'm level 110. <laughs> yeah. I just killed that raid boss. <laughs> yes, just yesterday I did that podcast with the Bryans. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Why does it smell so bad? <laughs> Why am I hooked up to IVs? <laughs> oh. Indeed. Another Brian. Are you, you going to go to order? Just no. random Brian's. Oh, there, people are pointing at me. Uh, I you think I have an idea of something to recommend. <laughs> I'm going to recommend that one thing that I like a lot that you should do with me. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to pass. Go, come back to okay, me. Okay, fine. Um, there's a... <laughs> I panicked! I panicked! <laughs> uh, there's an app that I like playing called uh, Heroes of the Galaxy. It's a Star Wars 5v5 little thing. It's free to play. You don't have to put any money into it. It's just a grinder game, and it's fun. Yes, masturbating is also fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always so messy. Um... <laughs> I, I think I've I know I've recommended it but re recommended it before but after playing in a at a tournament three games in a row and be playing with the clock and on a competitive level Guild Ball is such a fun game right now especially if MK2 is feeling a little lully for you it's definitely if you have any interest in it at all I spoke vehemently against it during its like the first uh, um, whisperings of it in the community but I very much agree that well, it's they a, gave a you fun game. Well, he gave twenty bucks. He said, "Well, I'm in." <laughs> <laughs> I am looking to get in with uh, Celeste, but um, if it wasn't for Mark Three, I would probably would have been the, tempted. Mark Three just be like the problem. kiboshed all hope because when Mark Three hits, I'm <clears throat> playing a million fucking exactly. Games that's just that it. Game. Like right now, it's like do I do I spend like eighty bucks and do something to tide me over for a couple of months like or a month ish? Now nah, at this point, a month and yeah, a couple. Of weeks. Yeah, like when WTC weeks. get when when with WTC happening and me being on a team, I feel like I have to just shut off Guild Ball. And learn M MK3, play like at least two games a day to figure yeah. out what I'm playing for that event. Oh, we're, there, our, our, our Facebook groups, there, there's going to be nonstop. Who, who can play a game today? Who can play a game now? There's Showing up on Wednesday night at Pegasus might be completely out of the question because I know I won't get a table. I have enough problems getting a table now. Mm -hmm. So it's just like. Uh, well, I mean, mm -hmm. if you're on a team. No, I'm saying no, for no, no, M no. when MK3 happens. Yeah, you're like going to see you're going to see you're on a you're team, team, so you, can, up you can always make sure that you got other people. Yeah, I know it'll be teams. playing in Baraboo and playing against Ethan a billion fucking times. Tuesday at Misty will probably pick up. 
What's that? Go to Misty on Tuesdays. That'll, that'll probably pick up really. Yeah, I think Misty, bit. that MK3 is going to be very helpful for that store. Maybe yeah. they'll stock their fucking vending machine. <laughs> um, and, and I mean, we all live fairly close, so. Yeah. I'm I gonna, think most of us have tables. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm overlapping him a little bit. I'm I'm just recommending Blizzard games in general. They're so fucking <laughs> addicting and fun. It's and obnoxious, and they fucking have all this, all this synergy between them. Mm-hmm. You get the Overwatch. Uh, you pre-order Overwatch, gets you a free character, and you know Heroes of the Storm, and a free free wings in Diablo, and a free icon card back in Hearthstone. I mean, it's just annoying. And their games are just fun. Like I'm gonna play the fuck out of Overwatch. I may cancel some of my week plans just to play Overwatch a bunch <laughs> this week. Uh, I've already played it. I dabbled a little bit in the closed beta. It was so much fun and. Here's the storm is so much fun. Diablo, Di- Diablo seasons are much fun. People, a lot of people still used to play Diablo when it launched. Diablo when it launched was not that great. Diablo it three wasn't. was pretty subpar. I wasn't impressed. And the game is Diablo three now is, in my opinion, a completely different game than when Diablo launched mm-hmm. you, because it has the adventure mode and the seasons. It is just addicting. You're, everything the riffs. It's constant loot. It's all yeah. The riffs make it fun. You're getting all the loot you want. But there's a, Diablo made a statement where. They decided to open up the game to loot. Like basically, it's it's fucking loot pinata and insanity. But pe- they decided to give people the loot they wanted more fast because they wanted to make players happy. They figured players might leave, but they would have enjoyed their experience and they come back. And their right, seasons goes back this. to goes back to WoW when they started becoming like the ra- you know the look for raids and yeah. look for groups and things like that. That everything became a loot pinata at that yeah. point. You just needed to grind it enough to get yeah. what you needed. There are games of yes, and, and you know, yeah. and sometimes people want to play the harder Dark Soul games, and you want to grind, and you want to spend those few hours to accomplish that small thing, and you really feel happy when you do it. And sometimes you just want to be like, "Wee, everything's <laughs> fun!" <laughs> and there's still the competitive. I mean, Overwatch heroes are still very competitive. You mm-hmm. can fight in Hearthstone, so there's still that you know intensity involved in it. But it's just they do fun and fast and enjoyable. Like when know. uh when. Burning Crusade first came out, I spent the entire summer saving up enough gold to get one epic flying yeah. round. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now all those and things... Now it's just like, if you don't have it by the time you hit 70, there's something wrong. Yeah. So that's what I got. Otherwise, any any last minutes? Tort? Uh, D3 does have actually a pretty decent single-player option. Tort. Yeah, I actually play... I actually... I mean, I've played a lot this weekend with people, but sometimes I just want to kind of play myself because... Everyone's at different paces, and I'm like I'm behind the curve in a couple players, so I never really know how good I'm doing. So if I play alone, I can kind of actually judge what I'm doing. There's there's rewards for solo rifting, so I kind of like. How are you today, Brian? I'm doing okay. All right. I sound nothing like the other Brian. We have a no. beard. Yeah. <laughs> you, you both have you both have beards. <laughs> Beardific. Yes. Anyway, I think that's all we yes, got you do for today. The, the one thing about uh, Diablo three as well is that it is currently free. Besides buying the game itself, yeah. I mean, playing in the seasons and all that—that's all free. So that's basically free content that private or that. Uh, yeah, they basically. Yeah, they <laughs> they're just, just giving yeah, out. They all revamp the time. their season. Yeah, they're not making additional money. They just make it good if people buy it. And then if, but when you're playing like Diablo, you you kind of st- you you kind of look around, and go, oh, what what is it? Because they're 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 launchers for all their games. So I, I'll play a game. I go, oh, I forgot about this other game. Maybe I'll play StarCraft mm-hmm. now because it's it's right there, and you know. So and that's how yeah, that's actually how I got into Heroes of the Storm because I noticed it was free and I was playing D three at the time. I was just like, oh, yeah, sorry. So yeah, have you been doing that the whole podcast? No, I have to yell at you if you've been doing that. No, well, you couldn't only only when it wasn't his turn for the his Tim his turn for the erection. Oh, okay. All right, that makes sense. All right, so that's it. We're done. Woo. No more Brian's for you people. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not by the control panel to stop this. You gotta stop it. <laughs> Just hit, <laughs> all right, the stop bu- it. <laughs> hit all the buttons on the, on the on the thing. We'll see what happens. Just start hitting X's and hopefully you'll I have, get there. I have an hour and twenty minutes to prepare for Game of Thrones. That that <laughs> would work. Yes, <laughs> that would. Yeah, so, so cause like how far in, how far you're, you're to the end. Welcome to the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're about to sign off. We're we're sick of ourselves. Right. Too many Brian's, not enough Brian's. Uh oh. Too we're, many dicks on the dance floor. Boom. Bye bye bye.